All right, today we're talking about creating the door schedule. If you go onto OneNote, you'll see the tab for door schedule and some directions in here. So first thing we're going to open up is just our regular floor plan that you should have done already. We're going to save it with a new name called door underscore schedule. And we're going to save that to the same place you save everything else. And you'll also notice my example down here of what we're creating for the door schedule. And all the way at the top here, you'll see my digital copy. So you can actually double click on that and open it up in AutoCAD. And I'll show you my example of everything on there. All right, so over here in AutoCAD, I have my floor plan open. I'm going to do a save as. I'm going to, I have a different folder than you, just make sure you find your architecture folder. And you call this Bernanke, or your last name, door underscore schedule. I'm going to put a two after this because I already have my first one done. This is my practice. Just make sure you put the proper naming convention. Go ahead and hit save. So now you should have two of these open. So make sure that you have the right one. So you should have your floor plan separate and you also have your door schedule so please make sure you're not accidentally working in the incorrect one all right so i'm just going to go through here i'm going to make sure that i'm not on the dimension layer i'm on something else i'm going to turn off with the light bulb and turn off with the sun all right so that turns everything else off and depending on how you're looking at your house that's going to just varies depending on case by case of the length and width of your house and like the shape of it it kind of works better if mine's this direction because it'll fit better on B-size paper in the end. Because otherwise, if I put it this way, it just it's kind of it doesn't fit as well. I guess it could, but sometimes it doesn't fit as nicely. So it just depends on what you have. So in this case, I'm going to lay it off to the side. Because I'm going to work on yeah this way. That's what I'm going to do. Okay. So I'm going to label each one of my doors. So I'm going to create a polygon. You can choose a different shape if you would like. I'm just choosing to do a six-sided polygon. So I'm going to do six. I'm going to click on the screen, hit enter. I'm going to do a 10-inch inscribed polygon. And inside of there, I'm going to draw a text box. I'm just going to start out, which is a capital A. And by default, it should come in at six inches. If for some reason it is not six inches, just go in there and highlight it and make that six. Right, I'm going to put that in here. I'm actually going to rotate it too. And I'm going to turn off Mortha mode for this. Don't really need it. All right, so that is centered. So now this is my symbol that I'm going to use uh, for this. I'm going to highlight the whole thing. I'm going to place this on ID symbol this time around. It's a kind of a hazy yellow. Okay, so you need to decide here what's going to be A, B, and C. So since I only have one of this type of door, I'm just going to make that A. I'm going to put it right next to it. So I don't have any other A's of that double-sided exterior door, so I'm going to do a move copy of this. I'm going to put this over all my sliding closet doors. I think I only have two. All right, however many you have. So I'm going to say that's B then. So I'm at it. I'm just going to highlight that, call that B. Over here, highlight that, call that B now. I'll do copy select again. I'm going to find all my interior walls that are the same. And the best way to find out if they're the same and if you're unsure, uh, you can go ahead and just click on it one time and do a right click, quick properties, and it'll pop up here. So now I have a 26 right hand. Right now I'm just worried about sizes, not worried about left hand or right hand. That doesn't matter in this case. Just make sure that they are the same size though. So quick properties, 26. So go around. And find all of your 26, 2 foot 6 doors and place on, you know, whatever your number so happens to be. So before I copy anymore, I'm going to change this to a C. This is going to save me time. And I can do a copy of this again. So I'm going to put this by all my C's now. There, there. So now I'm going to need a D for my pocket door. So I have two of those. I'll highlight that. I'm going to call that D. I'm going to do a copy select of that one. All right, so there isn't an exact right on what you call each one. Just create your own naming convention as far as A, B, and C, whichever. That'll be up to you. But I'm just going to stop there. You get the point of all of these. But I'm going to end up having more because I'm going to have 
one's for my bifold. I'm also going to have my sliding back door, and I have this exterior door. So if we look at, let's, let's open up my other example, my completed one. So here's my completed one. I end up having one, two, three, four, five. I have six different doors in here. All right, so I'm just for time's sake and for just for the demonstration, we'll need to do a couple there. All right, so now we need to, once you're done putting all those on there, let's look at my example here. I have every single thing labeled. I went all the way to F. All right. So the next thing we need to do is actually create the schedule on our B-size paper. So I'm going to go back over to my example. I'm going to zoom out. Go to B-size. And if this isn't rotated the way you want it, just go in here, just double-click in your model space and just rotate it whichever way you need to. I'm just going to tuck that down to the bottom here for the time being. All right. So now once you're all done with that, I'm going to put this on my text layer. Definitely pause at this point and go back until, you know, until you're done with all your room tags and you have everything labeled appropriately. That's going to take you a little bit of time. I did that pretty quick because I've done it before. So take your time on that. Make sure you get everything in there. All right. So I have everything on. All right. So I'm going to zoom out. In our annotate tab, we have a table. So I'm going to go ahead and select table. I have a standard table and how many rows and columns I have. Um, I'm, un I'm unsure, so I'm going to hit cancel here. I'm going to look back at my example, or you can look at OneNote to see it. So I have one, two, three, four columns. And then whatever, however many you have. Imagine you're probably going to have seven columns. So I have symbols. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You may have eight. You may have six. You may have nine. It just depends here. But I have seven I'm going to do. So I'm going to go back over here into AutoCAD. I'm going to choose table. I'm going to have four columns. I'm going to have seven data rows. Yeah. Don't worry about this height and width. That can be adjusted later. So I'm just going to leave all this other stuff alone and just hit OK. And by default, this just pops up real nice for us. I'm going to snap into the corner. And it's already showing for the title there. So in all capitals... I'm going to type in door schedule. You don't want to hit enter. You can just click off of it. I know we're used to hitting enter a lot of times for things, but here I can just double click inside and that brings you out. If I hit enter, it brings in you to the next space or I can hit my arrows left and right, whichever one, or I can click off of it and I can double click back in. That just depends. Okay. So I'm actually going to type in now we have symbol. And then we're going to have, which one? Quantity, type, and size. So I'm going to pause the video here and go ahead and add those things in. Your symbol, quantity, type, size, and then the actual symbol letter. So I'm going to pause, and when you come back, you'll see that completed on my end. Okay, we're back. So definitely pause and go back and forth as you need to. But you can see here I did make a mistake. I made too many rows. If you find that's the case, or if you need to add one more, just go ahead and click on your schedule. And here in this last one, I'm just going to select that last one. So just a row 9 is highlighted. If I right-click on it, I can delete the row. Say if I need to do another one, I made a mistake, I don't have enough, I can right-click, and I can do insert row below or above, you know, whatever you need to do. All right, so I just need that one. Now I'm going to go through, I'm going to count how many of each symbol that I have. I know for certain I only have one, and then if we go over here to, if I go under account each one, I'm just going to look at my other one that I have completed already. But this is basically what I'm looking at. So I have one of that, 9, 2, 1, 1. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and pause and fill all that. All right, so after you went back in your model space and you counted out how many of each symbol that you have, you enter them in here. Now we're going to be looking at the type. So the type we're going to get by looking back here in model space again. I'm going to select it. I'm going to do a right-click, quick property. I have a 30 or 3-foot right-handed exterior 2-sided. So that's the information I'm actually going to input. And unfortunately, I can't really copy and paste that into my other one. But if you look here into my OneNote, you can see I put panel exterior two-sided. All right, the size we'll worry about in the next one. So I have panel exterior two-sided. That's what I'm going to type into that. Panel ext. two-sided. All right. Now for the size of that, uh, typically 
Well, you know the size because of what it says when you hit quick properties. That's not 30 inches, that is 3 foot 0. Now the height of them, there is a standard height. So if you went through our, an architecture book, if you just kind of looked it up, you would see that a standard height is actually 6 foot 8 inches. Yeah, 6 foot 8. Alright, so what we're going to do, let's go back here, double check that, yeah, 6 foot 8 into my B size. Alright, there's a lot of clicking. So now I'm just going to go in here, I'm going to put in 3 feet, 1 apostrophe, by 6 foot 8. They're actually all going to be 6 foot 8, so I can actually just, I think, copy that. And I can paste, mirror down, paste. They're all 6 foot 8, so all I need to do here is change some of these rounds. I know for certain this one is going to be that one's actually 2 foot 8. So you can do that copy trick if you want. Or it's actually 2 foot 6. Oh, come on. Yeah, this gets a little tricky to use sometimes. So I have 2 foot 6 there. All right. So my next time, for my next one inside there, if I just look at my cheat sheet here, I have an interior flush. So I'm just going to put flush interior the next sliding closet. Uh, this one it's kind of made up, shower glass, even though it's the same symbol as the other ones, but it's only two feet wide. I have a panel for my exterior door. That's this one way down here in the corner. And my sliding patio is six feet. And I know that it is six feet, because if I go here and I select it, do a quick property, 60, that stands for six foot zero, pat. So you can do a sliding patio door. And here is my panel exterior. And then any other ones you might have, I don't have any, but I do have bifold. So let's see, let's back at. Oh, I need to add one to this. I messed this up. Okay. So I have my sliding closet, and I missed my sliding bifold, or my folding bifold one on here. So be the way, make sure that you have each door labeled, each kind. You can look at this for your cheat sheet. And since I do need to fix this, I'm going to go here. Well, one I already have done, I'm going to insert a row below. I think I might need to, that might have to be G to look into it. But that one is going to be a bifold. And let's see, in the model space, where'd it go? Yeah, I only had one. Yeah, it's easy to miss. Okay, so make sure you catch all of them. That is a four foot, and I need to make that, I need to make that G. Oops, G. Back here in my B-size paper then. I only have one of those. And I have four feet by six foot eight. All right. So now the last part of this I'm going to cover. Um, say I know I'm switching back and forth here, but say we're all done. This is our completed door schedule or whatever. Down here, this says floor plan by default. We're not on floor plan anymore. We need to double click on it and make sure that that says door schedule. And also set your scale. So just like we did before when doing our floor plan with dollar dimensions and our room tags on it, select your viewport layer here. And then if you have this open already in your properties, or you can do right-click, quick properties, but I have this open here, so I'm just going to check it out. An architectural scale should be 1 8 Yeah, 1 8 would be fine. Sometimes 3 16 might be too big for your stuff, but 1 8 is going to work for me here. I'm going to zoom in real close, make sure my scale says 1 8 to 1 foot. It's kind of on top of it, so I'm going to maneuver some of this stuff around if you need to. You can click on one of these grips you can move this whole thing off, off to the corner if you need to. Don't forget to double click on my name and put in your name here. And then you can do a snipping tool. Once it is complete, just like say this is our complete one. Yep. Do a new. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to cancel that. I'm going to double click my mouse so it takes up the whole page here so it's not real pixelated and I get a little, better, a little better picture quality here. So I'm going to do new. Then I'm going to take a whole picture of this guy. 